Oh, hey there. You're probably wondering why I'm climbing through all these branches. Well, I'm in the middle of searching for the perfect environmental, natural materials that I can use for our sculpture assignment in Art One based on the artist Andy Goldsworthy. I think I found enough. Come check it out. So you can see I'm sitting outdoors and I'm trying to collect some of the really great natural materials like rocks and stones and leaves and all kinds of other natural things, blades of grass, anything that I find interesting that I could use for my environmental sculpture. What's an environmental sculpture, you ask? Well, artist Andy Goldsworthy, who is Scottish, is probably most known for building environmental art where he collects these natural materials. He looks to see how they could be incorporated into the land and then he builds sculptures based on those materials. You're going to see a lot of examples in the Google slide I shared with you as part of our HyperDoc, but I'm going to give you a sampling of my process and what I'm working on to get ready for. So since part of Goldsworthy and most environmental artists work is the idea of collecting natural materials and then being inspired by things that are already existing in their environment, one of the things I notice at my house is I have these huge sort of flower pots or urns that sit out on our front porch. And for most of the early spring, like they do now, the only thing they do is collect a few weeds and some dirt. So I'm going to use this flower pot as inspiration for my assignment. So I've been over here collecting sketches and leaves and ideas and I noticed that around my house I have tons of branches and sticks in my yard that I'm picking up. So as part of my yard work I've been saving those sticks and now I'm going to develop them into what looks almost like a bird's nest. So you'll notice a couple things. I first drew out the environment by Bible which that my uh, Grecian urn sits in. So I've got part of my porch and the bricks. And then I started sketching out the actual location of where I'm going to put the actual idea. I've made some notes that I'm going to make it a bird's nest sculpture. And of course, most importantly, I got to make sure that I have the sticks. So after about 15 minutes of walking around my yard, I got a ton of branches, as you can see here. And I think I'm going to start to use these for my concept sketch and my sculpture. So I'm going to go back over to that flower pot that's sitting at my house, and I'm going to start trying to put some of these sticks in and seeing if I can develop something that looks like a bird's nest. So a couple key elements that are really important in putting together your environmental sculpture. Number one, you have to consider the environment by which it's going to be viewed. Number two, you have to understand that there's going to be something happen called entropy, which is the idea that your sculpture is eventually going to start to break down with wind and rain and sun, and it's going to break apart. That's part of the enjoyment of the sculpture is to see how temporary it lasts. But before it begins to entropy, before it begins to break apart, you want to get two, count them, two really good photos from two different points of view of your sculpture so that you can best describe what your results are. Remember, only natural materials. You're looking to show some of those important skills that we've still learned throughout the year, like contrast and balance and finding things with interesting texture, much like my tree branches, and look also for things of color. Maybe you want to start looking for some flowers that are blooming, or maybe you'll find some really cool colored leaves that you could create a mandala or a radial sculpture with. It's all about the materials, the color, the contrast of those colors, and what can you do with them to create a beautiful, simple sculpture. There's no size requirement. It doesn't have to be large, but you do have to take two photos of it, and you do have to develop a preliminary sketch. Oh, and don't forget to go on that show which you know in Schoology and answer a few reflection questions. Hey, good luck everyone with this challenge, and I can't wait to see the results.